You know, managing endocrine therapy in premenopausal women with hormone receptor positive breast cancer is primarily an individualized uh, challenge. Why is that? Because both the treatments, but also the tolerability differs greatly between individual patients. So treatments are mainly um, prescribed according to risk. If a patient is a candidate for endocrine treatment, then that means that uh, she um, has had a receptor positive tumor. We call this endocrine responsive disease. Um, if the risk is very high, either by clinical parameters such as five or six or more involved lymph nodes at the time of surgery, or in some cases, in some institutions, a multigenomic uh, risk assessment tool, a test will be used. If that would be high risk, then these patients additionally will receive chemotherapy. And then you have all the issues around uh, managing the side effects of, of cytotoxic therapy. The majority of, of patients, however, will not receive uh, chemotherapy, but will have endocrine treatment only. And according to studies such as SOFT and TEXT, nowadays I think there are two standards of care. If the risk of recurrence in premier partial women is uh, low, then these patients will all only receive tamoxifen. If the risk is high or patients are particularly young, be, um, below the age of 35, then these patients will receive a combination of ovarian function suppression plus an aromatase inhibitor. And according to these uh, treatment regimens, the management of the side effects uh, will be more or less challenging. Usually, tamoxifen can be handled uh, reasonably. Um, hot flushes is the most important clinical side effect, which obviously can be very cumbersome for some people. I mean, I have remember a patient of mine, and she was an announcer at a great uh, at an important TV station. And you know, if you sit there and do your job, and then all of a sudden you need it to, to change your shirt. I mean, that's obviously something that can be very difficult, uh, f uh, for example, also for actresses on stage. Uh, for the majority of women, this can be handled. Then there is a, a, a very wide spectrum of um, functioning tricks and tips uh, that uh, can be used uh, to help these patients. Many have to do with lifestyle. So it's well known that physical exercise um, actually helps a lot. There are reports about um, yoga, being regularly exercised, being helpful. And there is quite a number of uh, reasonable lifestyle advices, losing weight or at least controlling uh, the weight um, is, is also very important for controlling the side effects. If the hormone deprivation goes beyond that, which would be the case with the addition of ovarian function suppression and or um, the substitution of tamoxifen with an aromatase inhibitor, then usually um, the side effects are uh, more significant. And that can induce uh, bone or joint pain, uh, sleep disturbances, sometimes uh, difficult to treat uh, losses of sexual interest, which can obviously also impact on the quality of life of a patient and, and maybe on, on the marriage or, or this. And, and also issues about coping. So there is some psychological burden with that additional treatment, which is on one side, the the consequence of all the other physical uh, sequelae, 
but there's also some mood changes has been reported um, as an individual side effect. Now, talking about all of these sounds like that would be terrible treatments and nobody could stand it. That's not the case. In my clinical experience, about every other patient will uh, be able to manage these issues easily or not experience them at all. And of the other 50%, I would say um, it is a, the vast majority can handle these. Sometimes we exchange drugs. And I have, I, I remember maybe a single digit number of patients where we could not master the side effects, sometimes rare side effects. And we eventually decided to shorten the treatment duration or, or to stop treatment at all, because after all, in these situations, this, these are patients who are most likely cured from breast cancer. So they received their treatment um, in order to reduce the remaining risk of recurrence. And it does not make sense to destroy their quality of life um, and bring them too much trouble. So it's always a very individual um, weighing and balancing of benefit and of, of side effects that, that needs to be done. Most importantly, this takes time. Um, you need to see your patient quite often, reserve a lot of time. Some of these issues are in taboo areas where people are not used to speak about their sexual function, for example. So the task for physicians is to be prepared to be uh, sensible, um, listening, asking the right questions, and not ignoring this. What we know is that some patients do not take their, prescrip their prescribed uh, uh, medicines, and, and we call it non-compliance or, or lack of drug adherence. And I believe the most important issue for that unwanted observation is that physicians do not really pay attention to what patients tell them. And there might be physicians when patients start complaining about side effects, they just briefly say, you know, you know I know it, but that's how it is and we can't do anything about it and you need to, um, to stand it for five years. And then patients have a tendency maybe um, to stop doing the, the, the correct treatment uh, on their own. In general, or in summary, I would say that um, one needs to know about the side effects, about the mechanism, um, and one needs to listen carefully to an individual patient, and then for the vast, vast majority, um, these things can be easily resolved and managed.